greetings from downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Today is Monday, April 8th, 2024. It is 2.04 p.m. Eastern Time. Total solar eclipse day. Just a little over an hour away from the total solar eclipse happening. You can see here at Cleveland State University, the physics department has, uh, they're giving away like a lot of glasses solar eclipse glasses to students there's the several like stations where you can specifically look at a telescope and see the protected view of the sun i have my pair of glasses here i used in the thumbnail i think the sun is actually right above us right now now i'm not going to wear these while i'm walking around live streaming because when you put those glasses on, the only thing you can see is the sun. Everything else is like pitch black. What I may actually use though, because initially when I was going to be juggling the camera for this event and uh, yeah, I was thinking to myself, well, when the eclipse happens, I don't want to be like trying to throw those glasses on with one hand while recording with the other. I just want, I figured maybe I just wouldn't look up at the sun, but then they gave me this thing too, which is essentially the same thing as the glasses, but instead of having to use, you know, both hands to try to fit the glasses on my face in a rush, I can have one hand with the camera and one hand on this. I don't know if this will work. Uh, let's see here. All right, so I'm looking up at the sun right now. Oh, you do see part of the partial eclipse because the partial eclipse is supposed to start at two o'clock. Let me try to put this cell phone up here carefully. Oh, I think you can actually see it. So maybe I can do that when the thing happens. And that'll show you part of the eclipse. So the partial eclipse was supposed to begin at 2 o'clock p.m. right on the dot. So it's 2.05 right now. So we're five minutes into the partial eclipse here in downtown Cleveland. Or Cleveland or anywhere near the city of Cleveland. You, know, you don't have to be downtown to see a lot of people are flocking to downtown just for the event and also today's the Guardians home opener. But a lot of other people are just enjoying it from their backyards or uh, finding a place that has a good roof deck and enjoying it there. Yeah, it's essentially a holiday in Cleveland. Fingers crossed that the live stream connection stays good through the moment of totality. I know I've been anxious about that for a bit, wondering with all the visitors, would there be an issue? Now, like right here, we're by Cleveland State. There's not a ton of people down here. Once we start getting closer to East 9th and the malls, you're going to see probably uh, an uptick in crowds. And then down, I think the biggest crowd looks like it'll be down by the Great Lakes Science Center and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ken J says, It is crazy down at the Science Center and people here on Public Square too. Yeah, I'll probably, even though I just did this same walk down Euclid Avenue this past Friday for my April 2024 construction update, I just am pretty much going to do the same walk right down Euclid. I'll probably head by Public Square, see what the scenery looks like there. Linda says that shocking guy is headed to a parking garage. Well, I know initially shocking guy was saying on Twitter a few days ago that he was going to go to, or he was invited to go on someone's roof rooftop I assume uh, like at a resident uh, apartment building or residential place maybe maybe he's going somewhere else I know he was gonna live stream too there's the Cleveland State University police pulling in there's an increased police presence in downtown which makes sense. One of the things 
any visitors down here when there's a big event I have to be conscious of is even though everyone's here to celebrate, or mostly, like 99.9% .9 of people, you never know if you're gonna get some bad eggs. Granted, it's not like St. Patrick's Day where people are drinking and tempers flare up. But you just never know. Perishable Goods 13 says, greetings from Old Brooklyn, viewing, viewing from the upper porch of a double nice hey, even someone something like this like these people they're just like sitting down here you can enjoy the eclipse from anywhere I was trying to debate that in my mind if I didn't have Poco Traveler as a channel would I have just enjoyed it from like the backyard of the house or would I have gone to downtown or I've gone to Lakewood like to me with the Poco Traveler I wanted to capture downtown because it's the most you know popular thing for viewers of the channel to see and you're going to get to see a ton of people on the video I still haven't quite uh, concluded in my mind what I would have done if I didn't have this channel I'll try to peek every so often with uh, this thing to look up at the sun. Looks like it'll be like straight above us in the sky because I was wondering, oh, wh what direction will the sun be at a certain time? So five minutes have gone by. I just looked up with the thing and I can see the moon creeping ever so slightly over it. These darn scooter people race like uh, an inch away from my elbow as they blow by. <laughs> Linda says a physicist from NASA demonstrated an eclipse using a steamer basket. There were dozens of tiny eclipses. <laughs> yeah, that's fun how they can get creative in those demonstrations. It kind of remind you of what. Uh, what you'd try in elementary or middle school as a science experiment. Caffeinated Misfit says the NASA telescope feed has 11.9 million, what, live viewers? Right. Well, I, <laughs> that seems like too many viewers. Perishable Goods 13 said that the NASA, just the regular, not the telescope feed, but the NASA feed has 400,000 viewers. We need to direct, even if we direct, imagine if we just directed 1% or a fraction of a percent of those viewers here, that would put us like in a couple hundred viewers. Guardians logo right up there at the State Theater. Well, now it says the 48th International Film Festival, which is going on from April 3rd to the 13th. Totality is supposed to happen a few minutes before... Uh, now, now I'm forgetting. Is it a few minutes before 3.15 or 3.13? Damn it. I had it etched in my brain ahead of time. Now I forgot when I'm out here, but if someone in the comments can give me a quick reminder, is it 3.13? I feel like it's 3.13 p.m. that it's supposed to happen. Let me mute the audio for a second here, this music.
maybe Linda says maybe 3.14 p.m. in Cleveland. Yeah, the last article I had read right before I came out here mentioned a few seconds before. And then I'm trying to think, was it 3.13, 3.14, 3.15? It should be pretty evident, though, once it's actually happening. Earlier today, I did a brief vertical live stream down by the Great Lakes Science Center. They were holding an event down there. So I showed off some of the people and there were a couple t-shirt vendors along the way. One of the t-shirt vendors was just trying to dump his shirts. He said he said he claimed he overstocked. He was saying $5 a shirt. But then further up the road, they were selling them $15 a pop. And then with it being the Guardian's home opener, usually you're going to see increased parking rates. They were also increased for the NCAA tournament. Final four women's event this past weekend. But as far as parking rates today, I only got to glim got a glimpse at the ones that were by the Great Lakes Science Center, like near West Third. I know one of them said fifty dollars, or two of them said fifty dollars. A few said lot full. The one closest to the lake said forty dollars, and then a little bit up uh, East Ninth Street, there was one that said sixty dollars. Then I had seen on social media a little bit ago, someone posted indicating that closer to Progressive Field, some of the lots were charging like $70 and $80. If you haven't already, by the way, feel free to like this video subscribe and share the friend share the video link with a friend especially if you're an out of towner who or a native clevelander but are out of town now and aren't able to experience this maybe want to share it with other people who are in similar situations might be cool for them to see and as always the same disclaimer I've given a lot if the live stream connection ends up failing because of too many people being downtown and cell signals being congested I'm gonna pull out my other camera and record high quality and upload that later on but so far so good for maintaining a good connection. The Cleveland Guardians game is supposed to start two hours after the eclipse, so about 5.15 p.m. start time for that. All fans can start being admitted much earlier. 
So if you're standing at this intersection, the sun is barely peeking out beyond the Showfield building. So that's why I'm not looking up with the eclipse glasses right now or the eclipse lens. We have over 30 live viewers right now, so welcome. If you're just tuning in, we are in downtown Cleveland. The partial eclipse has begun. Progressive Field down that way in East 9th. We're going to keep walking down Euclid. So timing-wise, it's 219. You probably can't see that on the watch. 219 right now under an hour away from totality hitting the city of Cleveland. Other parts of the country that are along that band of totality will experience it, you know, progressively in the minutes leading up to when Cleveland will experience it. And the next time it'll be visible in Cleveland, Ohio, will be I think like 420 years from now. So unless you're planning on traveling somewhere to see it in the future. This is a once in a lifetime experience. I can hear one, well, hear and see one helicopter that's just floating above downtown Cleveland, kind of probably like over Superior, a little bit further down toward East 6th Street. Linda says that your daughter in Lorraine says it's starting now. Well, definitely the partial eclipse is beginning now. Once I get to Public Square, I'll probably take another look up. Well, I guess I could do it now. See, if I just looked up with my naked eye, and granted, do not do that. Absolutely, do not just look up with your naked eye. You're technically not supposed to look up with just your cell phone either, because that'll damage your lens. But if I, like, peek out of the corner of my eye, not even fully looking up. It just looks like a big, you know, the sun. You're not supposed to stare at the sun ever. So it's not like on the ground, like I don't see any shadows being cast. Let's take a look right here before we get to East 6th Street. Since it's 221, it's about 15 minutes since we last looked. Oh yeah, I can see the moon further. Let's see here. My yeah. See, I know you can see the yellow through the lens, but I don't know if you're actually seeing the uh, the moon coverage on that. Let me know in the comment section if you could see in the bottom right corner of that lens how the moon is covering it, or if, it, if that doesn't pick up on the camera. Now walking past East 6th Street down Euclid, heading toward Public Square. And then once I get to Public Square, I'll try to do another viewing with the lens. And in addition to the lens, with this camera, I'm going to try real quickly with my high quality camera. Because I'll be curious later on whether that picked it up or not. I have my doubts about it picking up through the lens, but I'd rather try it out and see. See some people just enjoying a late lunch as they gear up for the eclipse.
East 4th Street. Very busy. Maybe I should check out the vibe on East 4th for a second, should I? Hey, you know what? I want to save East 4th Street for later. Because I do plan on doing some videos uh, leading up to the, you know, after the Eclipse, but leading into the Guardians game. We got this guy up here shadow boxing in the mirror. I saw earlier today that there were uh, a few people setting up cameras here, like professional ones, and now there's a lot more. What I'm guessing is that it's probably projected that the sun's going to be right near Terminal Tower. People probably want to capture the right picture of Terminal Tower with the eclipse happening right next to it. Let's see here. Yep, it's moving ever so slightly closer. Let's see if we can... Where am I? I'm missing it for some reason. <laughs> Maybe I should find it myself. There it is. Yeah, I think overall on the camera it's showing yellow. But I don't know if you're quite seeing. Oh, geez. There's a lot of people <laughs> down here. You can see people along Public Square trying to get a good shot. Looks like they're all angled up at Power City, so they. Their choice of seeing the eclipse is going to be when the sun is right behind Terminal Tower and Tower City. Oh, there's our walk sign. We have other people chilling along. The Soldiers and Sailors Monument. Getting their seat. We've got 61 live viewers now. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Traffic on the square is, or going through the square is blocked off for other reasons. They're gonna be installing the public square Jersey barriers here starting tomorrow supposedly but also they have the extra police presence housed there. Other people sitting along the square here. This is what I wish 
you know, it gives you vibes of like Bryant Park in New York City. This is what I wish Cleveland Public Square would be like on an everyday basis near the lunchtime hour or evening hour. Certain events you'll see crowds, but otherwise, this is also kind of like a once in a lifetime thing to see so many people just relaxing in public square like this. See lots of people up on the elevated part of the square on the hill. Empress Jones says, good afternoon all, did I miss it? And Saint says, where is the eclipse, no darkness? No, you guys didn't miss it yet. Right now we're just in partial eclipse. The total eclipse is going to start around 3.13 or 3.14 p.m. So we are about 44 minutes away from that. Right now we're in the middle of the partial eclipse that began at two o'clock. So let's try to capture that again. I'm gonna to try to juggle this camera with my wrist for a second. Should have brought my tripod with me because I wanna to try to see if this camera will pick up the solar. Hmm, how can I do this? I think what I'm actually going to do is give me a second here. I'm going to take my tripod out of my backpack. I can sort of multitask with one hand. Should have remembered to do that before I started. By tripod, I mean this. I just attach this to the bottom of my gimbal. Okay, let's see if I can position the camera on this thing for a second. it worked. I was able to see it a little bit through this camera, putting the lens up to it. Let's see here. Is there a way I can position it here and angle upward? I think that's, that's too much of a hassle. 
because I can't really see the camera where I'm pointing. So I'm going to continue just walking around here. But I've got my tripod on. So now if I need to uh, set the camera down again, I can do so. Let's do more of a walk around Public Square. And then I want to head over by the mall area. Now I'm conflicted though, once totality is about to start. Initially I was like, okay, I'm, my heart was set on getting ready to be at mall B in the big open green grass. But now seeing the amount of people down here and that it's gonna be a good view next to Terminal Tower, I'm thinking to myself, well maybe I should just stay over here. Here's the police presence I was talking about. So that's a good thing. Earlier I was mentioning what if some incident happens. You've got other people just relaxing in the grass. Beautiful weather day, by the way. I can't remember if I mentioned at the start of the stream. Right when I began, we had uh, gotten 69 degrees. Sunny, clouds aren't going to be an issue. I mean, I didn't think last week when I was looking at the forecast, I thought there was no way that I'd be able to wear shorts and a t-shirt. All right, let me try to catch up on some of the comments I may have missed. Empress Jones says, thank you. This is my first time seeing this. I am nervous. So I assume you're gonna be able to see the live stream in person. Just make sure you have uh, solar lens glasses if you do look up at it. Laura says, what happened to the clear skies? It is, it is mostly clear. I mean, there's some glimpses of clouds, but it's not, not bad at all. Paul Forsyth says, thank you for capturing this. I wish I was there, former Clevelander here. Thank you for tuning in, Paul. Glad I can be able to share this with you. Empress Jones says, will you tell me if the west side of Cleveland will get dark? This is my first time. That picture was scary to see. Oh yeah, the whole, if you're west side, east side of Cleveland, or any of the nearby cities, Brooklyn, it's gonna, I, oh, granted, I, not that I've been through it myself, but based on what it's supposed to be, I think you're basically going to experience three and a half minutes of nighttime during the day. Now granted, like street lights will still be on and stuff like that, so it's, you're not gonna see like, it's not gonna be like complete pitch blackness. Oh, that's a good point actually, since it's the daytime, maybe the city street lights won't be on like they normally would at night. So it might seem darker than normal. Old Wolf says, it's been a while, but I am back with you. This is going to be so exciting. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, good to see you again, Old Wolf. Sadie Lamp Duo says, down here in Texas, it's almost total eclipse and cold. Hey, Poco. Yeah, I know Texas is supposed to, parts of Texas are supposed to get the eclipse, like Dallas. Was it Houston, the other place getting it? Empress Jones says, am I safe to look through my window at home? I mean, you can look, like right now we're not looking at the sun, so if you're just looking outside, yeah, you're perfectly fine to look outside, but if you do not have the glasses, no, you do not, absolutely do not look toward the sun. That's why I have that lens anytime I'm looking up, so uh, don't want to risk it, because you could, for something that seems so simple, like you could get like permanent blindness or permanent damage to your eyes. But yeah, if you're just looking outside, like this is no issue during that three and a half minutes. It's strictly if you're looking up at the sun, because it won't be the sun, it'll be like the moon covering up the sun. And you'll see like a little bit of the outline of the sun behind it. But even that will, you know, if you don't have the lens, it'll do, can do permanent damage to your eyes. So don't risk that. Let me get out my other camera here. So we're 
behind the Cleveland Public Library at the War Memorial Plaza now. You can see the number of people out. Empress Jones, yeah, unfortunately, if you don't have glasses, just don't look toward the sun in any way. Again, if you're just looking strictly outside, meaning at how things look on the street or what your neighbor's house looks like across the street or your backyard, that's perfectly fine. But uh, if you are saying that you can see the sun, meaning up in the sky through your blinds, no, don't, don't even risk that. There's no nothing besides those designated ISO filters that are going to be deemed safe for direct sun view. Now over there across the street is Mall B, which is where I was wanting to view it. Now here, this might not be ideal to see it because the sun, I think, from this angle is actually now behind uh, Key Tower. But I think once you get over to Mall B on the grass, It'll be more open. There's an example of one of the parking rates being $60 for special event day. people relaxing on the grass. Oftentimes in the evening you'll see people running around with their dogs, or having their dogs run around rather. Heck, that guy's reading. He's got his solar eclipse glasses on. Reading. Someone else has their eclipse glasses on. Is losing their phone. <laughs> Do these people have different eclipse glasses? Because the ones I'm using, once I put them on, it's like complete darkness, unless you're looking directly into the sun. So I'm a little confused about that. I have some porta potties here if people need to use it while they're waiting. Let's go ahead and walk up the stairs.
City Lamp Duo says it's total eclipse now in Texas and dark. That's awesome, you get to experience that. We'll be getting that. Let's see, it's 2.44, so about a half hour from now. I'm gonna try to look at an update. So I'm looking straight above us. It's remarkable how you could have the sun shielded, you know, even looks like it's almost like halfway shielded and yet it doesn't really impact the amount of daylight that you're seeing. Although I guess it kind of does seem faintly gray. I think I might end up staying here. This was uh, the spot that I initially wanted to go to up here on Wall B. And there's a big enough crowd here where I like it. Colorful. You get the view of Cleveland Browns Stadium in the background. Some people with a special camera and lens are pointed right up. There's our first, uh-oh, <laughs> the connection signal dropped from perfect to all of a sudden weak transmission signal in a blink of an eye. So I'm trying to walk a little bit away from that area, see if I can regain the signal strength. Yeah, we might have an issue based on that little Care, although the signal's getting better over here. Maybe because I was, there's a more concentration of people by the Great Lakes Science Center, but I don't know if that would. I mean, we're talking about, is there another cell phone? I don't know how exactly traffic congestion would work. If it matters that much or if it's pretty much like, oh, if you're in downtown Cleveland, you're going to be congested. But the signal seems to be getting stronger again down here. It does seem to be, like I was alluding to earlier, a bit hazier with the sun, meaning like it doesn't seem so bright, brightish yellow. So that partial eclipse getting closer to the total eclipse seems to be having an impact. There's going to be a certain point, I don't know if it's, right now I'm probably targeting 3 o'clock p.m. where I'm going to be videoing simultaneously with this live stream, but also doing like a full video with 
my high quality camera so that way as I said if the connection craps out right as the eclipse is happening or before or after it I'll still have some footage try not to blame me because I have no control over that with the congestion signal does seem to be getting stronger down this direction though so if that doesn't change I might find myself standing somewhere among this area as opposed to all the way at the top of the green hill City Lamp Duo not quite that long away, City Lamp Duo. We're only uh, like 20, 23 minutes away from totality here. Later, uh, yesterday afternoon, evening, I shot two short videos that I'll be publishing the Poco Traveler later this week. One of them will be a video that focuses on the Cuyahoga County Library in Brooklyn and the old versus new library location. And then the second part of that video will be I checked out the Brookside Reservation cherry blossoms for the very first time so got that on video and then the, the second video will involve some renovations that happened at a local park in the inner city of Cleveland my mom had told me about it so we went over and checked that out on video so just two small like little appetizers as far as video content to look forward to So right now we're in a bit of a holding pattern in the sense that I'm not, I don't want to leave this area and explore other spots. Granted, I could do it, but I'm just going to soak this in. Plus, it seems like more viewers are tuning in as we're getting close to totality. Got 86 live viewers, so welcome everyone. We are about... Uh, let's see here, 253 right now, 20 minutes away from totality, but it's definitely getting darker as we've been filming. Nature Girl says, starting to look a little clouded over on the west side of Cleveland. Caffeinated Misfit says, I tried to put my glasses to my phone and they were too dark. <laughs> I know we've got a light post and a lamp in our way here, but I'll take another peek in a second. Jack Yamero says, hi, greetings from Ukraine. Glad to see a live view of a person just walking around. Oh, thank you, Jack. Nice to have a viewer from overseas here. I always uh, am envious of the New York City streamers because they, they always get a ton of international viewers, but it's not often that international viewers are too interested in Cleveland. So much appreciated that you're checking it out. Okay, yeah, the tree's in the way right here. Let me shift back over here. 
by the bathrooms. More so this walkway. Yeah, it looks like we've got nearly three-fourths of it covered. Again, look... <sighs> I swear when I look through this, when I put the phone up to it, you can't tell that it's three-fourths covered, but it is. In fact, when I look through it right now, it looks like a crescent, like a crescent moon would be if you drew, drew a crescent moon. Meaning the sun has turned into like a yellow crescent moon. Caffeine and Misfit says it's kind of creepy shadow here outside Athens, Georgia. Weird aura, about three fourths covered. And Barbara says, "Hello, Chris from Wyoming." Yes, about 18 minutes until the maximum. Let me. Uh, I'm going to set this camera down again on the tripod. I'm going to set it down on the ground because I'm going to film uh, a quick video with the, this thing again up the camera off the ground now. Attila Kalinka says hi. Attila from Serbia visited Cleveland in 2017. Gray City. Nice to see it live. That's awesome another international viewer so thank you for tuning in yes excited to be live here showing a once-in-a-lifetime eclipse opportunity up to 90 live viewers now so if you enjoy what you're seeing feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already we try to feature a lot of videos from Cleveland but and also other cities that we visit Ken Jay says the view from the Cleveland Water Crib five miles out in Lake Erie is great. Sadie Lamp Duo says y'all will be screaming in elation under total darkness in Cleveland. And then Caffeinated Misfit talking about how it's getting darker there in Athens, Georgia. Don't be scared, Empress Jones. <laughs> none of, pretty much none of us have ever seen one in person. Again, as long as you, like all these people, if you're just looking around, at the ground level there's no there's no risk or anything you just got to make sure if you don't have glasses that you don't look at the sun nisha says they're joining us from hyderabad sorry i'm probably mispronouncing that but india so welcome yes it is definitely darkening <laughs> i swear it looks like uh you see a streak in the sky there almost like an airplane or a little plane flew by. Empress Jones says, is it okay to see it on here with you? I'm watching and listening to you on here. Yeah, you can definitely, uh, definitely safe to watch it on like a TV screen. So you're not going to get any damage if you watch it on a, a stream like this. If there was any damage, like if I put the phone up to the sun, I could risk damaging my camera sensor, but you as the viewer on uh, I'm, I might be a danger if I'm looking at my direct phone screen but you as the viewer at home aren't gonna be at any risk 
Marcus Robinson joining us from California. Lisa, Lisa Margaret in the house too. Good to see you, Lisa. <laughs> I know it's <clears throat> not often you get to tune in for a live stream. Empress Jones says, can I look at the sky with you? Well, you can look at the sky like this because I'm not showing the direct sun. I try to put the filter up anytime I do. All right, we are a few seconds away from three o'clock p.m. And that means it is about 13 or 14 minutes away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start recording with this camera simultaneously. So we'll see if we can juggle that. By the way, you're going to hear me talking in third person because I'm this is going to be like a vlog video that I'm uploading separately. So if you hear me talking as if I'm narrating a second video for a second, uh, bear with me. All right, it is 3 o'clock p.m. here. I am now switching to doing multiple videos at once. So I've got my live stream going here. And I'm also recording with this. The totality is supposed to begin in about 13 or 14 minutes. And we'll try our best to juggle both of these cameras at once. But from now, I'm going to try to continuously video capture with my high quality camera. Just in case something happens with my live stream. I don't want to miss it out. And by the way, for this vlog video, if you hear me narrating comments, like reading what people are saying or talking to viewers, that's because I'm reading their chat messages on my live stream. So just providing that context. But I actually don't want to give up this spot. This is one of those things where anytime it's crowded or a busy place, it's sometimes good to find like an anchor or a barrier. Because like if I stand right here, no one's behind me, no one's in front of me. And I still get the same view that everyone else is getting. Nothing's obstructing my vision. Although I probably could do another walk around. Marcus Robinson says that they live in California but own rental property in Cleveland, so always watch the channel. Thanks, I appreciate it. Nice that you're tuning in from all the way across the coast. And you have some investment in the city too. Unique LED Products says hi from a former Clevelander in Northport, Florida. Yeah, was, that's another one of my motivations for a lot of the videos I do. Granted, I love when local who live here see it too, but I like when other people are watching it as well. Who are former residents or people who have never even been to the area. Or like the one viewer who said they were international in viewing it. Old Wolf says be careful of the background music. You don't want to get dinged. Yeah, I do hear that music that someone's playing in the background. I'm hoping that it's low enough that the uh, video doesn't pick it up but we'll see I could at one point like in post processing once the video uploads if YouTube ever flags it as a copyright yes initially they would demonetize the video meaning uh, no monetization allowed on it I would have the ability to mute the audio during that time which isn't so bad, but the main downside to that is anytime you mute audio on a live stream, it removes the archive of the live comments that were made. And that's part of the fun of this, is seeing all your guys' comments as we're going along. David Wood says, hello, thanks for showing former Clevelander living in Boston, not seen here in decades. 
Welcome, David. Glad you're tuning in. So about 10 or 11 minutes now until totality. B. Prido 50 asks, what do you do for a living? My main work is IT related work, and then I do a couple of side jobs. My one main side job that I've done uh, since 2006, I've contributed to a Cleveland Browns blog called Dogs by Nature, and then this hobby, I call this a hobby video channel, Poco Traveler. So a combination of those three things. The dog is not barking at the eclipse. He's bar barking at his little friend that he saw walking by earlier. <laughs> no. Lisa says, I wonder if they should put glasses on the dog. Yeah, I've never thought about what to do with animals. I don't know if they're really going to be looking up during that time. Alright, real quick. By the way, if I stop reading some of the comments, don't mind. I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm just, uh, it's at crunch time here, so I'm trying to check the time and multitask with both cameras. After the eclipse, I will be walking around more and trying to see some of the comments. Let's take another look that we're about. Jeez, it's getting close. It's like six or seven <laughs> minutes away now. Right, that is incredible. I'm glad I I'm glad I got this thing because initially I wasn't gonna look up at all, but like it still looks relatively daylight out here. But when you look up here, I still don't think it's showing. Few minutes away I did notice my connection signal all of a sudden had another drop here that's gonna be the tricky thing again because right right when totality is about to hit you're gonna have you know it's not like an influx of people are coming in the area but what you're gonna have is a lot of people are gonna whip out their cell phones and try to upload content so <laughs> just keep those fingers crossed that we're still strong enough here only got a few minutes to go. Like I said, just a second ago, I uh, looked up with the lens and it seemed like the moon was covering the sun like 99%. I'm sure it's a little bit less than that. Old Wolf says, your signal seems to drop every time you put the filter in front of your camera lens. <laughs> well, that part, <laughs> that's funny that's, uh, that it happens when I do that. That part is purely coincidental. The, the doggy's friend again. So I think we're about four minutes away. And remember, once we hit totality, it's going to be about a three and a half minute stretch of darkness. It's amazing too how they can time all this up. Caffeinated Misfit says probably not coincidental is a special filter. <laughs> 
don't know, I can't imagine that this it's impacting the cell phone signal because even when I took it away the signal was still you know inconsistent it wasn't like oh well I should clarify maybe something happens in your guys end, but on the signal meter that I have uh, it didn't seem to be related to that <laughs> yeah I'll have to test it one day for sure guy can do like an unlisted video Definitely getting darker here. The guy there shouted out three minutes trying to let everyone know. We're up to 107 live viewers joining us. So thank you all for tuning in. It's ever so close right now. One bad thing about having a smartwatch, <laughs> trying to look down at the time and someone just texted me. There we go. Now, now the text message went away on my phone. So it is 3.11 and 34 seconds. Man, it's crazy. I feel like by the second, I can feel like it's just getting darker. <laughs> like you can almost see the rapid acceleration of darkness. I still can't remember if it's supposed to be 313 or 314, so we're about, let's just say it generally like two minutes away. And then now what it looks like from being here, it looks like there's a big flashlight in the sky. Like the sun is a huge flashlight and everything else besides the sun is becoming dark. Maybe I can peek up with the phone ever so slightly. <laughs> Am I going to do this against my better judgment? Yeah, all right, that's as far as I'll go for without the lens. Jack says the exposure on your cam detracts a bit from the show yeah i can definitely see that because this camera right here makes it seem like it's still daylight out look at that sky All right, real quick, I gotta pull that lens out. So I'm gonna pause my high quality camera. Let's get this lens out. That's weird. <laughs> I can't see it through the through the lens. It's strange. I put, I put the lens up to my face and it doesn't show anything. I don't know if that's just my glasses or what.
<laughs> Maybe I misread about this. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'm not advising people to do this, but like, did I misread? Are you supposed? To, maybe you're supposed to be able to take off your glasses when the eclipse is happening. But don't don't do that on my accord. I'm trying to like very quickly peek up. Okay, Jack's saying yes, you can take them off. So yeah, maybe that's my misconception that I should have read about that ahead of time. I just kept on hearing everyone hammering about like, oh, during the eclipse, like don't take them off, don't take them off. So I guess the glasses are for leading up to the eclipse. All right, but for the rest of this, I'll just let you guys enjoy the scenery. So I guess for that very three, three minute window when it was totality, you could look up. So this is not, if any other time in your life you'd see this, you'd think like, oh, you're videotaping at nighttime. Nope, this is three, about 3.15 p.m. in the day. And two hours from now, the Guardians are gonna kick off in bright sunlight. Sadie Lamp Duo asked, does Terminal Tower have a light show? I'm not sure. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse my language. I just saw the... I looked up and I saw the sun peeking out and I was like moving my eyes. So I wasn't looking at it. So now it's the point where it's not safe to look at it again. So I'll have to watch back on my camera later on to see how it looks uh, on these video streams. I have to imagine that there's no way it looked uh, as impressive on video as it did in person. I think it was one of those things where you definitely had to be out there looking at it. All right, now since we're we're still going to be in a partial eclipse, meaning this, you know, the moon slowly <laughs> the moon slowly uh, faded over it going one direction sorry the moon faded over the sun going one direction reached totality and now it's going to finish going the opposite direction for I don't know if it's like an hour and then we'll slowly be returning to full brightness but I want to take advantage of walking around downtown Cleveland again It's always nice to check things off the bucket list, so to speak. Not that I ever had, like, witnessing a total eclipse on my bucket list, but 
months ago when I heard, you know, a lot or last year sometime when I heard, like, oh, a total eclipse is going to hit Cleveland, and, you know, a rare event. Then all of a sudden my interest was peaked. Skynet says, it is amazing. Seventh Fire Stephanie watching from California. Thanks for sharing. Ken J says, that was great. And again, if you guys are making comments during it, like, my apologies for not being able to address those. It was just, uh... Busy trying to capture everything and also enjoy it you know soak in the experience myself the one thing I regret about it is which is a huge thing is I can't believe I was uh, mistaken on thinking that I was supposed to view the eclipse you know when once it reached totality with the glasses as well and it, the funny thing is now that I remembered that I was like yeah that's right I have heard that in the past that the safe time is during totality, you can take off the glasses. But I swear, you know, being in Cleveland and reading all these headlines for the past few months, it, I swear everyone just kept on hammering, don't take off the glasses, permanent damage, permanent damage, permanent damage. So like, that's the most recent thing I had in my head. They probably did mention somewhere about taking off the glasses during totality, but I just had a lapse in that. So thank you to the commenters who were confirming that we could do it. Thank you, Ken, Donald, Laura, Lisa, Perishable Goods 13, and everyone else that's here. Lisa says, wow, the fountain looking gorgeous. Yeah, so now that the eclipse portion is done, I can focus like less on the eclipse and now we'll transition this to a bit of an opening day live stream. Right now it's 3.22 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I was trying to look where's the sun right now. I think it's behind, from this angle, I think it's behind uh, Key Tower. They turned on this fountain about a week or two ago. I know I've checked this out before on the live stream. Uh, one of my mom's relatives. This will also be my relative. Looking for the, there you go, Calvin, Calvin Huss. Let's head on back toward Public Square to see what the scene looks like there. At some point I need to like stop somewhere and charge my phone. Right now it's at 66%, so that doesn't seem too bad. But the other day, uh, I streamed for two hours last Friday. And all of a sudden, when my phone got to like 20% battery remaining, I stopped the live stream. But then after that, like three minutes later, my phone just went down to 0% and died. And I had to charge it up.
You still have remnants of some people with their camera setups and just relaxing near public square. Oh, well, some of the crowd is dispersed. Don't get me wrong, there's a ton of visitors here, but I think one of my misconceptions is I think a lot of visitors, like not, when I think back to like the Cavs parade, for example, where you, you had like significantly more people downtown, that's because like the parade and championship, everyone was downtown for that specific reason. I think the visitors are more dispersed, like you may have had pockets of people at Edgewater Park or Lakewood Park or just visiting friends and family and seeing it from their house. This was the final four, one of the final four decorations that was here for the women's final four that concluded yesterday. Or Iowa fell in the final to the undefeated. Sadie Lamp Duo said the total eclipse in Texas took 30 minutes to get to Cleveland. Get out. Welcome traveling. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Uh, enjoy the show? Oh, yeah, it was great. Awesome. Good to see you. I'm a, a follower of your channel. Good to see you. Do you ever comment or do you, do I, should I give your name a shout out? Or? Uh, uh, my name's Ken. Ken, Ken Lewis. Ken Lewis? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> That's awesome. I love, I love it when a uh, fan recognizes. Uh, trying to think last time I saw, I mean, there's been a handful of times now where people have recognized me. Well, the other day on Friday, the guy who recognized me wasn't because of my channel, it was because he played basketball with me. But I know last year in, uh, when I was at the Feast of Assumption, there was a person who recognized me. Although that wasn't on video, it was right before I was about to start my, law, my video on the Feast of Assumption. All these camera workers are still here. Got to enjoy the show. Julie says, thanks for this. Our plans changed and we could not come home to view it in person. Well, I'm glad I was able to give you at least a little bit of a glimpse of it. So if I had to describe the feeling of Eclipse, like I'm not, I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, like, oh wow, that's like the most beautiful thing. Like to me, it was like, oh wow. Like I look up at it and it's like, that was like awesome to be a part of that. And knowing the rarity of it, that's why I made the make. I think you, uh, you know, if it's possible, try to make the effort to see it. 
but it's also not something I would be like uh, kicking myself over necessarily if I couldn't make it. If that makes sense. But still, you know, awesome because the experience. I don't think I'll purposely travel to a spot of totality again. Never know. If I'm nearby an area and I know it's happening, you know, I could maybe I'll venture there. But yeah, it's, it was cool to see that three and a half, four minute window, complete darkness. So this is the tricky thing now in trying to judge where downtown Cleveland traffic will be. Because it's 3.31 p.m. But the Guardians game doesn't start till 5.15 p.m. Which is another you know, hour and 45 minutes away. So it's not like like usually in, in previous years when I try to do videos about the home opener and showing the crowd, I usually start at like an hour before the game's going to begin. We got loud music playing here, so I'm going to mute this for a second. You might find that I'm muting it throughout 4th Street because there's a lot of music here, but stay with me. Getting close to prospect. All right, I think some of that initial music is behind us, hopefully. Yeah, Ken, that's a good point. A lot of people will be able to say what they were doing on April 4th, 2024. I don't know if I'll remember, like, in my head, the specific date for the rest of time. But I'll definitely remember where I was when the eclipse happened. Downtown Cleveland. At Mall B and amidst the crowd. Looks like we've got a pregame party going on here for the Guardians home opener. Some pregame festivities.
still got the final four window clings up which makes sense they're not going to rush to take them down after it just happened yesterday the temporary cleveland script sign is down that way in front of rocket mortgage field house you got people using it as a photo opportunity now Empress Jones asks, this is soothing watching you do these type of streaming. Do you have, do you do this on a regular? If so, I have a question and a favor. I try to do, uh, I used to try to make a habit of doing one, at least one live Cleveland video a month, walking around downtown Cleveland and talking about the latest updates. Hey there. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's two people who said they're a big fan in person. <laughs> I'm becoming a mini mini celebrity now. <laughs> but yeah, I'd also upload a lot of pre-recorded videos. Like most of my videos on the channel, I record with that high quality camera and post them. So just, you can just look through my archive and see a ton of them. But these live streams, if the connection works, it's very fun to interact with the users. A lot of times users will good, give good insight. Uh, you know, provide information, context about the area. When I'm in Cleveland, the live stream connections, oh, particularly the downtown area, often seem to work well. I haven't had as much luck live streaming in other cities so that's why for example when I did my uh, when I had my work conference in Phoenix at the beginning of March I did I, up, I ended up uploading like 17 or 18 videos but almost or not almost all of them were pre-recorded videos none of them were live streams because the one live stream I attempted the connection was about to die immediately so I just killed it so it is 3 40 p.m. right now Guardians home opener will begin 4 45 about an hour a little over an hour and a half away so the crowd I mean since there's such an early entrance allowed maybe you'll have more of a phased entryway in terms of traffic but usually, if you get here, when the game's about to start, you'll see the lines all the way out to, like, here. And then they'll actually have to, like, pause the line when they're doing the national anthem. And then they resume after the national anthem's done and continue admitting the rest of the fans. So we're very much early here.
So I knew they were having a temporary Cleveland Guardians team store. I didn't know they were putting it right here on Gateway Plaza because they're doing renovations on Progressive Field, including that whole area over there. The team main team store is usually in that direction. So since that area is closed, they've got a satellite team store here. Other construction. I don't know if we can get a view of it from back here. Let me try to look at the solar. <laughs> yep, it's still going. You know, the opposite way. And again, I still don't think it shows through there, but when I look through the lens myself, you can see the moon now is going, you know, the other way. And it's probably like halfway from being fully removed. We don't have a good angle from here, but further up in the right field area, that's where they did construction and got rid of the what do you call it? Those old like hard building blocks and converted it to an open patio with dining areas. I think that's the mall guy, right? Is that? I, I haven't seen him in person before, but if he's still alive, I think that's the guy that they used to call the mall guy. Well, up there is what I was talking about where when they did renovations years ago, they got rid of the big, or they had, they installed those big blocks up there. Didn't really go over well, and then now this year's renovation, they got rid of the blocks and converted it to a big open patio up there. Time will tell whether that ends up being a hit or if it's not, uh, not anything worthwhile. Before the trees grow in, this is your spot where you can always see home plate from outside the stadium. And then once the trees go in, uh, that area gets covered up. That's always a fun, fun thing to be aware of. If you're a fan just passing by without a ticket, all-new Hyundai Sonata Fe and the Guardians hit a grand slam in the third inning. Again, because it's so early, that's why you're not seeing big lines. I 
Empress Jones asked if I could try to cover the Bay Village area. Ideally, I'd love to cover much more of the suburbs in the Northeast Ohio area. Right now, I still don't have a car in Northeast Ohio, so getting to and from those suburbs becomes a challenge because a bus ride out there takes a while. But yes, ho hopefully in the future. Unfortunately, I don't have a timeline. Action News. It's tempted to walk by, but I don't want to be one of those people that just like uh, eavesdrops on the backdrop of their broadcast. You got a busy, thirsty parrot bar over there, jam packed with people. Event parking. This is this is one of those lots they had the seventy dollar rate going. Yes, first time I ever seen it. <laughs> oh, here. This is the eighty dollar premium one. Can you imagine paying 80 bucks? <laughs> That's them like double dipping in my estimation on Eclipse and Guardian. Got a couple people in the a rocket. Usually we get big crowds over here. Oh wow, thank you. Linda says you made a $10, oh it says on my end, $10 super sticker, so I think that means a $10 donation to the channel. Thank you very much.
Lisa Margaret says, never pay that type of money for a parking spot. Yeah, $70, $80. The other day when we were, uh, on Friday when I was doing my live stream talking about how I would park far away to save money on parking. That, that would be like if I if we drove. Ideally, uh, save and ride transit for five bucks all day pass, or ride a bike, or you know, not everyone can do that. But I'm just saying, if you're physically able to, I just couldn't mentally handle spending eighty bucks on a parking spot. Like, how would you? How would I rationalize that to myself? Especially since I was always raised as a very conscious spender he's trying to help direct traffic and let the car go by <laughs> Empress Jones talking about maybe catching a bus to Akron yeah there was uh, about I think it was two years ago there was a transit fair that took place at Public Square. I did a little video on it, but not so much the part where I was interacting with people. But I talked to certain areas that, or certain bus transit systems like Lake Tran or oh, I think it's the Metro bus that might go toward Akron. So that was interesting to hear how you could connect on the same pa transit pass with some of those things. I haven't, uh, I still haven't done it, but that's something that'd be fun to do at some point. Yeah, it looked like an electric, electric unicycle, Linda. I think it had a John Deere logo on it. Oh, I've seen this vehicle a couple times too, like really raised up. I don't know what the deal is with that. It's always kind of fun to walk in the opposite direction of foot traffic because you get to see everyone as opposed to just like being glued to their backs. Got the police bicycle unit. Earlier today when I did a vertical live stream, we had the opposite effect. I ended that live stream up by Euclid, but when I was coming, I was walking this way, most of the people were going that way heading toward the Great Lakes Science Center and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But now they're all going the opposite way toward Progressive Field. It's like another electric unicycle. This one got the wonder Wonder Bread sponsorship <laughs> or Sunoco few sponsors. You may be wondering, like, why are there certain things where you see a, a big crowd of people, but then there's a big gap? Well, just imagine the traffic lights, you know, they change, so they let, like, this flow of traffic through. Then the traffic changes, cars are going, so you have that window where no one's coming. And then the next stream comes through and it changes again.
Hey. The room is beautiful. <laughs> Made sure I turned the microphone on when she gave her little shout out. The moon is beautiful, she said. I initially muted the mic again because of uh, some of those motorcycle type bikes were playing music. Oh. Bus blaring the horn. Still have to say one of the most or the most perplexing thing of the day so far was when the partial eclipse was going on and that one couple that was sitting down appeared to have eclipse glasses on and one of them was had a book in front of their face and the other one was looking at their cell phone You know what I wonder? I mean, there were so many places giving out free eclipse. So many places giving out free eclipse glasses. I know some people would are ordering them or paying like a dollar ninety nine in advance. But I'm wondering about the vendors who may have ordered a lot in bulk. I mean, granted, they probably weren't that expensive to purchase probably made a profit on a few that they sold but let's say you have a huge inventory of that because i'm sure there's a lot of over ordering what do they do with all that stuff the second the eclipse is done like now like no one's gonna buy them right so they just gotta pitch them all in the garbage let me take another look right here at the eclipse Getting close to being done with the eclipse. I feel like it was maybe 15% covering it now, again. By the way, if you haven't already, I would always appreciate if you smash the like button or subscribe to Poco Traveler if you haven't already. There's, subscribing just means you hit that subscribe button and then in the future whenever I publish videos, uh, they're more likely to appear in your YouTube feed. So that'll help alert you that I've posted a new video. 
then liking the videos just helps the YouTube algorithm know that, hey, people like this video, we'll help spread the word to other people so they can join in on the fun too. Well, at least for the clothing merchandise, you have a lot of people still biting. So we're heading back toward the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame area. <laughs> Trying to do a mix of killing time leading up to the Guardians home opener. But not just standing in the same spot like I was for a decent portion leading up to the total eclipse. This is like a national holiday. It feels like a national holiday in Cleveland. That guy there's got a 2017 total solar eclipse shirt. showed the camera more on that guy, but I was re had my eyes glued to the camera because I was trying to read the comments here. Perishable Goods 13 says, you don't need to wait for an eclipse to view the sun. Watch for dark sunspots. They are really active these days. Yeah, it's interesting. So those yeah, those glasses could be used in general just for, you know, you occasionally want to be like, oh yeah, let's have a look at the sun without damaging our eyes. Empress Jones asks, how did you come about doing this? I'm truly enjoying this. You're, you're referring to the Poco Traveler videos. I've said this uh, story a few times before, but obviously, you know... It's impossible for everyone to hear the stories because there's no way everyone's going to watch every video. But in a nutshell, during the pandemic, I started watching... Oh, hold on a second. Let me tell the story a little bit later where this music's not playing. Yeah, to tell the story of how I started doing this during the pandemic, I would watch. I had not, you know, I couldn't go outside really. Everyone was pretty much sheltered. My brother and I had been to New York City in 2019 before the pandemic for a week, so we thought it was really cool. So during the pandemic, 
I was looking on YouTube for live streamers who were doing videos in New York City, stumbled into this guy named Action Kid, who was covering New York City at the time, uh, like almost every day, even during the pandemic and then after the pandemic. So I thought to myself, oh, I love traveling and exploring too. <laughs> and I was intrigued by it. So I thought like, oh, no one's doing this in the Cleveland area. So I decided to start doing it in the Cleveland area. And I found it very peaceful for myself. Loved interacting with the viewers. And then I also do the videos when I go to other cities. Fortunately, this guy is talking over me with his microphone. Kingdom of darkness has deceived you into thinking that it is good. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. This guy's hijacking my thing. I'm just like laughing, like get out of my way. That's what I'm trying to think. Like I'm trying to trying to walk here, You're jumping in front of my way. <laughs> There's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Let's go ahead and walk on down to the lakefront. Got the grill going here. Smells good at Nicolo's Caribbean catering. Fried, gourmet fries, beardins, fries for five bucks. I, I don't do food trucks often, but some of this food is, smells pretty good. It makes sense that the food trucks are down here. Yeah, this is probably a jam packed place too, right by Lake Erie at. Uh, George Voinovich Park up ahead during the eclipse because they were supposed to, at least I thought they were, block traffic off in this area. Maybe they've since allowed it to resume. But I'm pretty sure they were supposed to be blocking traffic off. And judging by the number of people down this way, it was probably a popular spot. Oh man, that kettle corn. <laughs> I don't even eat kettle corn that much, but that smells really good too. See the police officers enjoying. I don't know if they're actually eating at M and D Tasty Creations, but <laughs> Perishable Goods 13 asked for a battery check. We are at. Uh, 44% right now. I might, when I get down here, if the signal's still good, when I get down by, actually in George Voinovich Park, I might like sit down for a second and plug my portable battery pack into my phone. And for anyone wondering why I don't do that the entire time, have the battery plugged in. That's because the gimbal that the phone is attached to, the core, if I attach the cord, USB cord to it, it would be pulling on it the entire time and it would make the camera go like this, like dragging down. I mean, it's not a guarantee it would do that. Possibly you could, I could get away with it if I position the camera a certain way, but in the past experience, oftentimes it'll do that. Wee. 
You can see a plane departing Burke Lakefront Airport. Yeah, this was no doubt. You can see all the cameras set up. I wouldn't be surprised if this might this might have been the busiest spot of all, where people were positioned earlier. You do always get a nice view of the Cleveland skyline down here. They even had a portable first aid station. Yeah, that would have been nice to be surrounded by the water too here during totality. You can see the bridge that they constructed a year or two ago being lifted. Must be a ship passing by or a little boat. Let's see if I can find a shade tree. So I can charge my phone in the shade. Probably have a spot over here where I can do it. Before I do that though, let's take a quick look at the boat that's coming in that they're raising that thing for. Just a small boat. Cleveland Sailing Charters. I assume that's what it's for. Alright, let's go ahead and camp out for a little bit. Oh no, they're going to take my spot. <laughs> okay, they're not. I thought they were headed for this. This is the spot I was eyeing. Okay. <laughs> Plugging in the battery charger. Sometimes when you're streaming though, it doesn't necessarily, like if it's at 42% right now, what it'll typically do is it'll keep the battery at 42% while it's charging rather than increasing it. At least they get a break to sit down. I haven't flipped the camera this whole time. But now. All right, there we go. Gotta just grab a drink of water. This is the camera I was referring to earlier. So I'm shooting a vlog on here that's going to be probably uploaded tomorrow. I don't know if it will be YouTube processed by tomorrow, but it'll be online either tomorrow or Wednesday. 
So this this uh, YouTube stream that you're seeing right now, even though it's been going for two hours. Uh, see? Yeah. I made the mistake of trying to lift the camera up while the battery was ch plugged in and it made the gimbal go all out of the way. So now I got to... Got to recenter it. That was my mistake for trying to show the helicopter. Yeah, I'll have this vlog video up, hopefully by Wednesday. Empress Jones says, this is amazing. I'm going to find a way to support your channel. Oh, thank you, Empress. Well, anytime you want to watch a video, that, that goes a long way. When YouTube loves it, when they see more and more viewers tune, tuning in. Ken says, what a great view of Cleveland waterfront. Oh yeah, that's what I was trying to say. So this YouTube stream, even though you guys are enjoying it, uh, anytime I watch these live streams back, you know, obviously I can tell the quality is, you know, it's not going to be great per se. It's just nice to see it live, but it's not, you know, good quality. That's why this camera right here shoots the very high quality video where you can see things in vivid colors and very nice so that's why I multitask and try to shoot a lot of my videos with that. Empress Jones says you need a sandwich. Yeah, I ate uh, two pieces of Rascal House pizza from, they were free as part of one of the Cleveland State University events earlier. Roger Hazelwood says thanks for showing the eclipse watching from Salt Lake City. Nice, Roger. Yeah, I was just uh, just flew out from Salt Lake City last Tuesday. Uh, let me go back. I may have missed a few comments. Leslie said, "Way to go, Poco." Thank you for filming the eclipse. My pleasure, Leslie. Try to get a change the angle up. Oh, see, tried to change the angle on that. It's very sensitive. Let's try to plug this in again. Here. So the th thumbnail for this video, I was wearing these Cleveland State University eclipse glasses, but I didn't end up wearing these at all during the eclipse itself, just because uh, while wearing a hat, it's not like regular glasses, you know, these are just you know, plastic on the end. So getting this on and off my head when I was trying it earlier... You know, I couldn't get it to stick to my ears unless I was using two hands. So having the camera in my hand, that, that wouldn't work. That's why I ended up using that other lens thing, which came out perfect. And I had not seen that lens thing advertised anywhere except for when I went to the CSU 
pizza event where I got the little free pizza thing, I saw that sitting on the table and I asked them, I said, oh, can I use this for the thing? And they said, oh yeah, maybe you can use that. And I said, oh man, that's going to work perfect. My mom had also gotten this earlier in the week from the, or not early in the week, I don't know when, it might have been like a couple weeks ago that she got them from the Cleveland Public Library. This one had NASA on it. My brother had gotten several from the Cleveland Public Library, the same branch, and those ones said NSF on them. And then down when I was at the Science Center earlier today, much of the events were handing out free glasses too. Ken, Ken J donated five dollars thank you ken he says thanks for the great job you do of showing our great city much appreciated thank you so much I didn't end up doing it, but I had brought my chest mount with me in case because I contemplated putting this on during the eclipse like I would during my bike riding videos. And then this attaches uh, attaches to this, so you like screw it in. And then I thought maybe I could record with my chest. But then I was like, eh, I'll just try to manage using both hands. And because when you put it on your chest, uh, you really can't control the you know, going up and down so easily. I still came prepared with my various equipment. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Darn it. <laughs> I completely spaced out. I wanted, I wanted Buford and Oscar to enjoy seeing the eclipse. Maybe they can catch the partial eclipse. <laughs> I do some goofy, published a few goofy videos that are all good nature fun with Buford and Oscar. Kind of just add some light, light colored humor. Like, <laughs> oh, did we miss the eclipse? Oh shoot, I think we missed it. We, we were buried in his backpack. <laughs> Sorry guys. Maybe 400 years from now you guys will still be around. Uh, me and my silly humor. Okay, let's... Let's give this a shot. I think what I'm going to try to do... I'm going to try to... Sometimes if I position... Normally you position the camera straight. I'm going to try to overcompensate and put the weight favoring the left side. And I'll walk and see if... See if that manages... We stayed a stable 42%. Let me try putting this, plugging this cable in. Sorry, I'm trying to work this out with the charging cable so that we have enough juice. problem is I put my <laughs> did all that and I forgot I put my 4k camera a lot or for my high quality camera back in my backpack I want to have that in my pocket one second here
kind of I tried to manage that and I messed it up even worse <laughs> trying to put it around my back so I didn't have to see how balanced we can be with this thing we might end up being a bit jerky Yeah, Empress, I used to have a, uh, or I grew up with a big collection of character stuffed animals. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? This phone's not working with the gimbal. I'm just going to hold this in my hand, and then for now, I'm going to hold strictly hold the camera while it's charging so you, the footage might be a little shaky or bobbly at, while I'm walking but we'll deal with it yeah I, I grew up with a big collection of stuffed toys that I we would have characters for of all different kinds normal characters weird characters bizarre characters, characters that were in relationships. It was fun little imagination stuff. So the Buford and Oscar are sort of the fun representation of that. I always thought it would be kind of nice and quirky to mix them into travel stuff. Plus now that I have a daughter, I figure, hey, when she gets a little bit older to be able to view some of that stuff and she sees the physical characters, she'll probably get a kick out of it as a, like a little baby. planes from Burke Lakefront Airport. Funny enough, Cleveland Hopkins Airport the other day had an issue, I think with some type of small plane. There were no injuries, I believe, but I don't know if it like had a little crash of some kind. So they ground, they basically told all planes not to land there. They diverted it on the other airports. And someone online was like, oh, did they divert any of them to Cleveland Hopkins Airport? And it was like, or sorry, did they divert any of them to Burke Lakefront Airport? And the answer was no. So more people were saying, well, that's even more reason why Burke is a uh, to give Cleveland a big kick for the lakefront. Oh, transmission is unstable down this way. I have had that happen a few times in the past. Get a little weaker signal down by the water. So let's go back away from the water since the signal's weak down there. I wonder when they're going to install the volleyball. to climb these stairs. A 
I'm gonna look up one more time. Oh, it is a full sun now. So the partial eclipse is officially probably been over, but the partial eclipse and total eclipse is completely gone now. Leslie's YouTube channel with a $10 donation. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm very honored to have all those contributions. Most of the time I'm just, you know, thrilled with seeing the likes, the number of subscriptions go up. I think we, uh, yeah, well, earlier today, I believe we reached 2,500 subscribers on Poco Traveler. So that's another bit of a milestone. And I love the comments that always come in. And I know, like, when I first, you know, before I started doing this, I would always see, like, Action Kid. You know, he would get an overwhelming number of donations. And I'd be like, oh, my God, like, that's so crazy how many donations he would get. It was never something... I like would expect but it's definitely much appreciated I always think to myself any of that stuff or any of the monetization ad revenue I get from YouTube it basically all goes back into the the channel in some degree whether it be you know oftentimes it'll encourage me to try a dining spot and show it on video that I wouldn't have maybe eaten at before because I'm like oh let me you know do this for the show this off for the viewers or entry into a certain museum and of course there's more of the boring expenses like uh gas if I'm driving somewhere not you know I I can support those things myself but it just always you know it's, it's it feels good <laughs> When you see like a little donation, you're like, all right, it's cool. You get to offset some of those uh, expenses. Rolling in info says $20 for Aunt Laura. Laura R, your subscriber. I know Laura R, the subscriber. I'm not sure what the context is when it says $20 for Aunt Laura. Ken J says, this is the plus of living downtown in Cleveland. This is your backyard. Yeah, especially a plus when it's so lively like this because Wednesday morning, or last Wednesday morning, when the final four, I was showing out the final four decorations. It was during the, during the morning, so I didn't expect a big crowd. It was still cold out. But for video purposes, it looked like Deadsville in downtown Cleveland. <laughs> you gotta, there's a lot of times when downtown Cleveland is very busy and active, but there's also a, a lot of times when it's virtually Deadsville. Oftentimes it's associated with the same type of things it would be in other cities, whether there's a sporting event going on, whether it's a Friday or Saturday night. But it's so thrilling to see the whole city alive on a Monday morning through afternoon.
one downside of oh, not being able to use the gimbal. Believe it or not, holding this, I could hold this for hours and my arm doesn't get tired, but holding the phone up a little bit higher just with my hand, <laughs> like you feel it in your bicep right away. Some more fancy vehicles. Right, Laura R, I know you're the Florida person. I just wasn't sure what the the one comment was from the other user that mentioned your name. I wasn't sure what the context of it was. <laughs> oh, that's understandable, Lisa. If there's another person uh, you know named Laura, believe it or not, I've had situations before where someone's asked me many a times, like, like, oh, are you the Chris Picorni who served in this thing? Well, usually it's not in person. It's usually via email. Like, they may have known someone in the Army or military back in the day or some relative... I've had several emails over the years about that. So yeah, that's funny when people have similar names and then you start thinking it's, you know, multiple people are like, is that, is that addressing me? <laughs> Empress Jones, uh, those, those goofy characters I call Buford, meaning B-U-F-O-R-D. And then the other one is right, Oscar. I've done three videos on the channel. You can look them up probably within the past three months. And I really don't plan on doing that many videos with them. It just happened to, happened to work out with the timing. Like I did the first video, I had an idea of like, oh, let's do a video of them flying around. Then the second video, I went to Las Vegas for Super Bowl weekend, and I was like, well, I gotta do a video of them acting like they're enjoying the Super Bowl festivities. And then the third video is when I was at my conference in Phoenix. By the way, the waterfront line is actually active. Uh, they were running it for, I think until like four something or five something today. Usually, they, when they did the soft reopening, it was just for Cleveland Browns home games. I should have thought about that in advance. I could have done a, a video <laughs> of riding the waterfront line. Although, it honestly, wouldn't be something other visitors to the city could really take advantage of until RTA decides to operate it on a more regular basis. As someone was pointing out, they really should just, like, make it part of the blue line or something rather than having it as a separate line. Alright, believe it or not, while I've been holding the phone like this uh, and having it plugged in, we have gained 2% of battery. So I'm at 
instead of 42%, I've bumped up to 44%. I might be safe. Maybe I'll do it once I cross the Lakeside Avenue up here to reattach it to my gimbal and take the battery pack off. Because now that it's 4.44 p.m., we're a half hour away from the Guardian starting. Uh, I think if I walk back, forgive the repetitive, repetitiveness of this, but I'm basically going to take the same, the same street back that I just walked earlier. But I figured it would be a good way to pass some time while seeing something new. And that was pretty nice to see the crowd at George Voinovich Park. Yeah, I figure the lines for opening day should be a little longer now. No, Empress, I didn't do a, it wasn't a review in the studio. It was purely like uh, goofy, humorous travel videos, like the one I was acting like they were flying to an airport for the first time. Uh, the other video was them taking selfies basically on the Las Vegas Strip and the other one was stuff in front of landmarks in Phoenix. Lisa says, you sure covered a lot of ground today, Chris. True, a lot of ground, but I've walked these so many times that it doesn't even f feels like I've, you know, it doesn't even feel like I've covered that much per se. Kevin says, good job in all you do, Chris. It's really enjoyable. It feels like I'm actually there. Thank you, Kevin. Here's a peaceful, shady spot. Well, I should say quiet, shady spot where I can uh, stop and reattach my camera equipment. Empress Jones says, I will watch How Do I Send Funds. Well, never required for anyone to do that. But it's always much appreciated. If anyone does want to do it, you, YouTube has a method where you can send, I forgot what button, somewhere near the chat on YouTube, there's like a button that has a monetary thing. I don't know the exact steps, but that should just get you started. Alternatively, uh, I don't think I have it in this video, but if you go to some of my other videos in the description, Sometimes I have a link to a PayPal thing if someone wants to donate that way. Give me one second, I'm just reattaching to my gimbal. Alright, 
back on the stabilizer gimbal. So the footage should be less shaky now. 43%, but like I said earlier, in reality, I know once, once the thing hits 20%, kind of goes south from there. But I think this should give us enough time to to get make our way back toward progressive field and see the lines outside the stadium. Kevin says there were two dirt bikes going along Oak Park as we were crossing the street. Thankfully, he made it in time. You have to be sensitive because your wheelchair bound full time. Yeah, this... You never quite know what some of these... Say, I'll say I'll lump them all into one category. Well, cars too. You never know what cars are going to do, but certain times bikes, bikers, scooters. Hold on a second. The music behind me. All right, so music is still playing, but it should be passing us soon. Yeah, that vehicle. But anyway, the story I was gonna tell there was when I, several years ago, probably more than several years ago, probably like eight to 10 years ago, my mom and I were, I think we were riding bicycles and it was at, about West 110th and Western. We were on the sidewalk. The sidewalk was much skinnier, so imagine the sidewalk was only from you know here to here. That's like a normal sidewalk length. And imagine now a telephone pole that's twice as thick as this, because telephone poles in the city are pretty thick. So it like go out to here. So we saw a ton of motorcycles coming down Western toward us. Like in the street but then all of a sudden we looked like probably like a hundred motorcycles we looked a little further down and several of them had gone up onto the sidewalk and were just coming full blast so like we were like oh shoot you know we couldn't go in the street and there's no like tree lawns to dip into so we both like ducked behind the telephone pole on western as they like zip by us and i know she was pissed i was more like like man like i can't believe well, i can believe it actually but you know just crazy that they do that without regard for anyone else, really. That might have been that stretch when there were issues of big motorcycle groups just having various ride-arounds and parties. But, you know, we, it's not like we call the police. They're not going to do anything about it, you know, especially later on. Laura R. asked, when will the Irish Bend Park be completed? That'll be a while. I think I said the projected date in one of my videos a couple weeks ago, but I can't remember the exact year. The only thing I do remember is that they're working on stabilizing the hill for the rest of this year and part of 2025. So actual construction on the... Once they stabilize the hill in 2025, then probably fall 2025, they'll start being able to actually construct the park itself, meaning 
whatever paths and amenities, decorations. But I can imagine that'll take a couple of years. So I want to, I want to say maybe 2027. Oops, did not mean to rotate that. <laughs> Sorry. Close up of my face. <laughs> I was actually tapping the button several times to try to get it off my screen and it wasn't responding at first, but then I think it did a misclick. Traffic has significantly slowed down as far as foot traffic down this way makes sense the eclipsed crowd you know when I was walking toward the lake earlier we saw much of the eclipse crowd making their way to the stadium already This is always one of those intersections in Cleveland where the light takes forever to change. There you go, now the car has the green light, but it's not going. You got the green light, <laughs> go! <laughs> Now's your chance, what are you waiting for? <laughs> go, go, go! <laughs> Like you waited long enough at the intersection, you don't want to have to wait a whole nother cycle, right? I can hear some pregame fireworks shoot off. It is 4:57 right now. people I haven't watched before most of the time when I do downtown Cleveland live stream videos I talk about uh, buildings or construction updates I haven't done that so much in this video today because I just did that this past Friday like in this past Friday's live stream that went two hours and 15 minutes I think I would talk about the City Club apartment construction take my time on it I talk about any other new developments I would see on Euclid the Sherwin Williams building construction. Today's video is, you know, a special thing. It's just part one focused on the eclipse. Part two. 
on the Guardian's home opener. We'll see how it looks when we get up to the stadium. But right now my perception is there's less foot traffic. Whoa! I wish I would have had my other camera rolling when that came by. Oh, there it is finishing off over that way now. Yeah, they were doing the flyover for the Progressive Field home opener. Look at that might have been the national anthem. Maybe they were doing it early. They lowered the parking. Earlier this was $80 when we walked by. Now it's dropped down to six, 60 bucks, probably because there's still a few spaces open and the game's about to start. Let's see what this parking lot shows about 10 minutes before the game starts. This one's still 70. The one over there, like I said, drop from 80 to 60 with the game getting close to starting and the eclipse already having been over. Nineteen news again. I don't think they're live right now, but this is where they're camped out. Here you go, though. 
This is why I waited and came back to see the longer home schedule for the 2024 season. They're off to a very impressive start on surgery. Oh, and our cell phone signal is getting weak down here. What's up, fella? during opening day. giving out samples of Pepsi, sugar, free sugar. Yeah, this is what I was mentioning earlier. Oh look, Smuckers is also giving out freebies of Uncrustables. I'm gonna try one. Take as many as you want. Many? I'm out of the way of people walking around. Yep, a few minutes before game time and then the lines of people trying to get into the stadium. Progressive field. Oh, no, I dropped one of my crustables. <laughs> That's all right. All right, well, our signal. So with this being the three hour mark and the connection wearing down and us finishing the coverage, we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up. So thank you all for tuning in. Again, one more time, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you next time. That was perfect timing with the fireworks happening as we uh, close things off here.